Hello, welcome back. Today I'll be doing the first character, this knight. Okay, so I'll start with a cylinder. I'll go down to 10 subs. I'll try to get uh, the line there in the middle so we can delete half of the model to me hurt later. I'll use the insert edge look tool and add some more edges to have some more topology to work with. Now let's get another cylinder in here for the legs. It's more of a cube because I like to use uh, four sides for the legs most of the time. And five sides for the arm. With these three cylinders we can have our whole body. Instead of ed uh, edge loop I like to use the multi cut tool to cut a shape out on the arm and the leg to make for the knee and elbow. This shape helps me get a better deformation when animating. It's not the ideal topology, but it's good enough for a low poly character. Another edge loop there will help me make a better defined forearm. Let's get rid of one of the sides, we'll mirror it later. Right now I'm gonna delete those to connect the arm to the torso. So let's combine them, mesh, combine. Use the merge vertex tool, merge those together. And the append to polygon tool to append some of this. Yeah, I'll just go shaping the torso the way I want and merging vertexes when it's when I feel no vertex is not needed. Again here I'll use the multi-cut tool to cut the knee out for better deformation. I'll make the feet of the character by extruding down then extruding the two faces that are in the front. Now I got my leg. Now let's connect the leg to the torso. I'll combine them and I'll extrude these two edges to make the pelvis. Then I'll use the pen polygon tool to connect things around. Okay, now for the arm, I'll extend this here, create the hands, I'll extrude it again, and this time I'm gonna extrude the thumb over there, and my hand will be like a mitt, so the only thing I want to do now is use the multi-coat 2 there and a pen there, and my hand is done. 
It's very low poly, I won't even really need to use the fingers anyhow, so it works. Okay, for the head I'm gonna use a cube, it's a cube head. I'll change the subdivisions around and start to shape my head. Of course I want to add a line in the middle and cut half of it. So I only have to work with half the model, I'll be hurt later as usual. Okay, this bottom part is not really needed, so I'll just delete it and scale it inside. Uh, to do the chin, we can actually extrude these three edges here. We'll connect those later to the neck. Now I have a good chin. If you wanted to go really low poly, you could just stop here, but sometimes it's nice to add some more topology in there and get some facial features sculpted there. So I'll grab the multi-cut tool and cut around for the brow ridge and the nose. Like on Antidote, I didn't even do that. Antidote didn't really have a face, the character. Let's mirror this, take a look. Okay, these legs look weird. So 
So what I'll do is I'm gonna activate symmetry. Come over here to symmetry and activate an object mode. I'm gonna pull those legs together a little bit more. With symmetry, you don't really, you don't need to keep uh, mirroring the geometry. Even though I actually prefer to just mirror the geometry, sometimes it's nice to work looking at both sides of the model. So I'll just go and make more, some more adjustments with symmetry activated. A quick and easy way to make an ear is to select the face and extrude it out. Then you can reconnect the vertex there with the merge vertex tool. And that's pretty much a simple low poly ear. Okay, so this time let's do UVs a little bit different. I'm going to create UVs and create UV based on camera. And let's delete half of the body, of course, turning symmetry off. Okay. Now let's do some cuts. I like to cut the neck out. I'll try to position my cuts on places where they can't be really seen that easily or places where the colors in the model will naturally change like on a change from pants to shirts stuff like that it's usually nice to create a cut there around the arm and hand so you can open the arm up another one there in the hips and one running down the leg and I forgot to close that feet, I'll have to do that in a moment. Of course, another one around the sole of the feet. To fix this, let's pick up the UV, scale it down. Select the two edges that are connecting there to the rest of the sole. Not this one, these ones. And sew it back. Okay. Now let's select every everything and unfold using the new unfold method this is a new method in the new Maya unfold 3d and it unfolds things really nicely to me that's nice enough to paint but that's not really what I want I want to actually model some more of my character this is actually just a base mesh, so I can create other characters out of this. So I'll stop at the base mesh for now. Just move the zoofies around a little bit before doing that. Okay, so my base mesh is done. I'll just duplicate it to the side there. I'll use it later. 
right now I want to get my character more like my drawing so I'm gonna start creating some new edge loops and extruding things to make some more geometry for boots and gloves and of course his chain mail kinda thing for the neck part let's use the multi-cut tool and create some topology there to extrude from Yeah, when mirroring, it's good to make sure that we don't have anything crossing over the line there. That boot was causing me problems. Now it's mirroring perfectly. Yeah, the character is pretty much there. Now it just needs a good texture. For that we need to adjust the UVs for the new changes we did to the model. That's looking good. Okay. So let's do another unfold. Uh, we don't want that. We want to do that only on one side of the body. So let's get rid of one of the sides again. And seeing that unfold, we need some more cuts to make the UVs better. So I'll cut over here, over here. Always picking places where the colors are supposed to change or are well hidden. So I'm separating there the different pieces of clothing. Separating the chain mail from the sheet of clothing that he's using over. The neck piece. Right. Let's do our unfold again now looking better but let's separate the palm of the hand of the rest of the hand and unfold again I love this unfold tool look how nice this is just have to adjust things a little bit and posi position things better and yeah our character is almost ready. Should just fix a little bit more things here. Make sure I won't have problems when painting this. I want to do that cross on the chest there, so let's try to get the chest more straight. Alright, now we have got our UVs here in Photoshop. We'll just create different shapes of the different colors. I'm not really sure which part is which here, okay. Now I know. 
Okay. Actually, don't need this here, so I'll just leave those faces that nobody will see. Yeah, this part's pretty much straightforward. If you've watched the other tutorials, you're pretty familiar with it by now. Okay, that looks better. You can already see my character there a little bit. Let's create some sort of face for him and hair. That looks awful. <laughs> but at least I can start to see the face there so I can fix a little bit on the modeling. I think this ear might be a little bit too high. The texture helps me to know what's wrong and what to adjust. And of course I'm not gonna fix everything here in the model, so I should probably head back to texture. Okay. Yep, that's looking better. Maybe he needs some adjusting on the UVs to get the eyes into a better place and the brows too. Okay. Yeah, that's looking way better. Okay. Let's add some shadows now. In places where the faces will be facing other directions or supposed to receive shadows, we should paint another layer of darker color. Now let's add some details of this Templar cross in his chest. I should probably have laid out the UVs better for this. The UVs are kind of uh, curving there a little bit and that's not nice, so I have to do some cheating over here to try and accommodate this texture better. Okay, yeah, that's not looking nice. We should get that cross more to the top there, so it will be passing more towards the bottom of his arm. And we can fix here in the UVs a little bit more. Okay, it's better. Another thing we can do is go into shading, texture baking, and we'll bake the textures. The turtle bake layer editor, create a new layer, add the object there. We'll get ambient occlusion bake. So let's go into the settings of the baking. Okay. Over here, outputs, shader outputs. We want to put a custom shader as an output. We'll go into surface and pick the occlusion sampler. Over here we can choose the amount of rays we want, as sample rays, and that will determine how high our emit occlusion bake will be. Okay. Pick PNG, edge dilation is good, and now let's go in texture baking and bake. Okay. It's a little blotchy, we could use more sample rays to get a little bit more high quality. So I'll turn this up a little bit. Let's bake again. Yeah, it's still blotchy but a little bit better. We can use a blur later to fix this, so let's open. Throw this in here. And that's not what I want. If you open the file, and instead drag the layer into the gray part of Photoshop, it will position it in the center, and that's better. So now let's just use this uh, multiply. So it will give us some cheap shadows there to start painting. And let's blur this with uh, Gaussian Blur. Let's change the skin color a little bit, I think the color was too light before. That's better. Uh, 
since I want this to be a chain mail, I should probably add some more details in here. Make it look more like a chain mail. Like I did in the face, I'm also gonna add some new colors in here into spots of the model that would be facing different directions. And uh, with a clipping mask, I'm gonna add a little bit of a lighter color to the edges of that cross. Just small details that will look better in the model. Yep, it's looking nice. Okay, yeah, I could stop here, but I also want to paint a little bit more. I'm using mittens on my model, but I could also include some fingers over here in the texture. Just a little detail, but makes it look a little bit better. And last thing, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna start painting some highlights with a lower opacity brush. In the overlay mode. I'll just go over in places where I think light should be and the ambient occlusion bake helps me figure that out because I can see where the shadows are. I'll just go and paint some brush strokes there so it makes it kind of pop a little bit more. And lastly, I'll make a new layer, put it to multiply, and paint the shadows. There is where the emit occlusion already has the shadows. I'll accentuate it more, and the other areas I'll just paint new ones. That's it, that's our first character. Okay, so 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the tour today. I'm excited for starting to make the characters. This week I'm gonna release a new tutorial with a simple tentacle character, teach about FK rigging. Then next week you guys will have two tutorials, one teaching about IK rigging, teaching how to create a monster that's only eye and legs, just to teach the basics of IK rigging. Then I'm gonna make another one that's gonna be rigging our main character that we built today. That'll probably be Tuesday and Thursday. I would like to talk a little bit about, about Patreon with you guys. Uh, I'm creating a Patreon for me to support my tutorial channel and support my other projects as well. So if you enjoy these tutorials, please take a look at my Patreon and consider supporting it. I'm trying to create more cool content to you guys and your support would be really appreciated. To become a patron, you can just click that button over there, then choose the amount and the reward tier you want. I come up with some cool rewards for you guys, so please take a look at that. When you continue to confirmation, you can choose to pay via PayPal or credit cards. You confirm your pledge. And that's it, you become my patron. And of course, besides all my appreciation and gratitude, you also get some cool rewards like uh, patron only posts, patron only live streams, and of course, my tutorials will continue to be free and everyone will be able to access them. But I'll also be giving PDF files for the patrons with screen caps and better explanation of the tutorials, and also the project files. So, all the project files I create here, you can download if you're a patron, depending on the reward here and you can use it in your own games. And I'm also willing to do, depending on the reward here, a Google Hangout session where I'll be working live and answering questions for you guys. And that's it, I, I really like the idea of Patreon and I hope it helps me bring a better tutorial channel to you guys. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Peace.